Hello viewers, this is Balaji Subramanian, Customer Escalations Manager of NSO product in Cisco Systems. So in this video, we talk about the best practices for implementing containerized NSO in LSA setup. Containerized NSO, we can run a container image of a specific version of NSO and your packages, which can then be distributed as one single unit. We can deploy and distribute the same version across your production environment. Use the development image containing the necessary environment for compiling the NSO packages. So a lot of good advantages. And regarding the LSA, it's a layered service architecture. It's an approach to logically divide NSO instances as per customer facing services, having service to service logic, and then resources facing layer with service device configuration mapping logic, helping one, one to manage a massive scale of devices. So in this video, Panak Desai, our software engineer, will talk about the containerized image implementation in LSE setup. And also, he'll give a quick demo on this one. Thank you for watching. Thanks, Balaji. As uh, Balaji has made you already familiar with what is LS and what is containerized NSO, now I would like to take a deep dive into this uh, topic by giving you an example on uh, LSA uh, with the containerized NSO. Here on my screen, what you see on the right side is uh, general architecture of uh, this example. Uh, it comprises of uh, three production containers and uh, one development container. Development container will predominantly be used uh, for uh, maintaining the life cycle of uh, service packages. And uh, among those three production containers, we have one upper NSO node and uh, two uh, lower NSO nodes. Uh, we will try to uh, push uh, certain configuration, uh, particularly the VLAN configuration on interfaces of uh, nets and devices. Uh, what you see on the screen uh, below uh, lower NS nodes uh, are uh, those uh, set of devices, EX series device and uh, FX series devices. Uh, so we will uh, make use of uh, service uh, on upper NS node uh, that will have uh, service service uh, logic mapping. And uh, this this uh, logic will be propagated to lower end nodes, uh, which will take care of uh, device configurations uh, with the help of uh, device uh, service uh, logic mapping. And uh, finally, we will push uh, these configurations to the uh, nets and devices. We will be looking at the example now. Uh, you can clone the repository that will be used for this demonstration locally on your system by scanning any of these QR codes. We have embedded uh, the links for both GitLab and GitHub in these uh, QR codes respectively. Once you have uh, cloned the repository, uh, you will see a directory uh, LSA container as example. Um, under the LSA container example, uh, you will see this content. But before we proceed with the demonstration, uh, we need to have some prerequisites uh, to be set in order. Uh, First one is, of course, to download uh, the containerized NSO images from our uh, Cisco software download center. Uh, you can download any version you want, but make sure that uh, you download both the production and uh, uh, development uh, images, uh, just like I've done, is, uh, done here already. And uh, they should be of uh, same version. Uh, then you need to place these images uh, into images directory. I can see this uh, because the make file will look for these images uh, when they are when when uh, make file is trying to load uh, during the make build process um, the second prerequisite is going to be optional one um, so when you download uh, when you clone the repository uh, the default values assigned to ver uh, variable is uh, 6.2.3 as you can see this uh, if you are going to use uh, something other than 6.2.3 uh, just like uh, my case here um, I'm going to use 6.3. So make sure that you will set it with the, the uh, correct uh, version. Uh, you also see the ARCH uh, variable here. ARCH variable is a substitute for uh, CPU architecture. And uh, here I'm going to use x8664. Uh, in fact, I'm going to leave it as it is because indeed I'm using x8664 uh, platform images. Um, if you are wondering what is uh, the other version, other uh, architecture available, it is uh, ARM64. But ARM64 is available only in 6.3 lineup and above. We are done with the initial preparations. Uh, now let's check uh, uh, what are some important supplied materials in this uh, repository. Uh, we'll start with the packages store. So packages store contains packages that will be copied into the uh, packages folder of running uh, NSO instances uh, 
depending on type of node. Uh, for example, the CFS VLAN will be used by the upper node uh, uh, because it contains service-service uh, service logic. RFS VLAN will be used by uh, the lower nodes uh, because it contains service device configuration logic uh, and uh, it pushes uh, configuration to the devices under the governance of uh, uh, CFS VLAN uh, service, uh, which we deployed through upper node. Uh, we also use RFS VLAN service uh, uh, to create YAM models for uh, LSNet ConfNet, uh, which will be uh, created on the go later. I will talk about that in a moment. Um, we also have a router uh, package here, uh, which will be used to create uh, nets and devices locally on the containers uh, of lower nodes. And it will also be used by lower nodes to onboard those nets and devices in NSO. We have uh, directories uh, here, uh, lower one, lower two, and uh, upper. Uh, each of them uh, contain ncs.conf files. Uh, uh, ncs.conf files are, uh, of course, specific to each node. Uh, we also have uh, dev. Uh, devs.xml under uh, ncscdb. Uh, this file will be copied uh, into each NSO node. Uh, it is also very specific to the node. Mm, this will uh, uh, this will uh, help us to boot up NSO with uh, certain configurations, uh, which will help us to use LSA. Uh, um, we also have uh, init uh, shell files uh, to automatically configure some settings uh, once NSO nodes uh, are up uh, and running. Uh, this will be uh, done automatically. We also have this uh, sync from uh, EXPL uh, under uh, upper. Uh, this is to actually perform sync from operation on upper NSO node to uh, sync uh, the lower NSO nodes. Uh, uh, in other words, it's uh, the cluster. Uh, we will now look into make files uh, uh, first target that is build. Uh, build should be run first to prepare the environment that you will use uh, for this uh, example. Uh, this start from uh, loading your images, uh, building temporary production and uh, uh, development containers just to keep our uh, uh, file structures and packages ready when we spin up actual uh, usable containers using Docker Compose. Uh, you can see this, there's a Docker Compose uh, file supplied. Uh, we will uh, uh, check this uh, when we will run make start uh, target. Uh, the temporary production container will uh, populate uh, this uh, uh, NSO wall uh, with a three sub directory called upper lower one lower two by the end of make build process. Each of these folders will uh, contain file structure for uh, running NSO instances. Further, we will also have uh, LSO log walls uh, mapped uh, to uh, production containers uh, logging directories uh, in each of their respective folder, uh, just like an NSO wall. Uh, during this uh, make build process, uh, we will also copy supplied packages uh, uh, that we uh, discussed here uh, in the packages store uh, into each of these uh, running NSO instances packages folder uh, inside the NSO wall. Uh, if you look at line 38, you can see that uh, we are making use of a temporary development container. Uh, this will uh, this container will help us do some chores related to packages uh, that includes building a package here that I was uh, mentioning earlier about the LSNet component. Uh, we name this LSNet component as RFS VLAN net. Uh, this net will be used by uh, the upper uh, node to communicate with the uh, lower nodes. Uh, to do this, uh, container will use uh, NS, NCS uh, make package during the build process. Uh, we also see here that uh, uh, the development container uh, takes care of compiling the packages. Uh, that's because when we uh, have all NSO uh, running, uh, we already have the compiled packages uh, and they are even they are up and running in those modes. We will uh, try the make build now. Uh, to do that, uh, we will say make build. Uh, you can see that it has uh, started loading the images. Um, 
we will uh, build uh, the temporary containers next depending on the performance of your system this is going to take a while so i will wait till this process is finished we have completed the make build process completely you can say this uh, we have done all this uh, ex uh, uh, activities here uh, we can also see that as a result of uh, uh, the make build uh, process uh, we have three sub directories under nso uh, which we had discussed earlier and uh, if you look at uh, their packages folder uh, under the uh, running uh, instances uh, directories you can see that we have appropriate packages copied uh, copied into them uh, the lower nodes have uh, rfs vlan and the router package and the upper one has uh, the cfs uh, vlan and rfs vlan net uh, that's uh, that's how the make build uh, prepares your environment. Um, now we'll be looking at the next uh, 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 target that is uh, make start. Uh, make start will be taking care of starting Docker Compose service, uh, which we have here. Uh, the Docker Compose service actually comes from this file. I'll quickly walk you through this. Um, so uh, the idea is to bring up three production containers and one development container together uh, as a part of the service. Uh, production containers use uh, Docker network to communicate with each other. Uh, uh, it's here. Uh, this is the network that will be used by the production containers. Um, we also see that there are uh, volume bindings for uh, each of these uh, nodes. Uh, we have uh, upper node, lower one, and lower two. Uh, we also have this uh, build NSO packages, uh, which, uh, develop, which is a development uh, container. And uh, volume bindings are such that uh, we have uh, mapped uh, uh, the respective container to its uh, running NSO instance folders uh, located under uh, NSO bool. Uh, but if you look at uh, the development container build NSO packages, uh, you can see that uh, the volumes are binded uh, only to packages folder of uh, each node. That's because uh, the development container is uh, just for building, maintaining, and developing packages. Um, it is not going to have any running NSO instances on it. Um, this uh, makes it convenient to manage all service packages lifecycle under one hood. Uh, let's try to run uh, make start. I'll clear this, make start. So you can see that uh, we have started uh, uh, Docker Compose service and uh, currently it is in uh, process of uh, firing up those containers. Um, currently the status is not ready. Uh, you can see that each of those containers are in uh, status one, which means they are not yet uh, ready. They are spinning up. Uh, once uh, they are all ready, uh, they will turn zero and uh, this will be uh, changed to ready. So let's wait. We see that the status is ready and uh, we are executing permission commands. Uh, we are creating uh, NetSim devices. Uh, let's wait till this uh, process of creation and uh, starting up those uh, NetSim devices will be completed. We have uh, successfully completed make start uh, process. Um, so you can see that uh, we have uh, executed uh, uh, shell scripts on each of them. At last, uh, this is to uh, put those configurations uh, which we want in SO nodes. Uh, to have uh, in order to run the LSS setup. Time for getting into NSO CLI. I have taken three terminals uh, here uh, for each node, uh, upper one, upper and uh, lower one and lower two. You can use uh, CLI targets to open uh, NSO CLI in your favorite style. Uh, I'm going to use uh, J style CLI. So um, we are gonna make uh, use of uh, the targets. Uh, 
So this one is the first one uh, for upper node. Then we have uh, lower one and uh, finally we have lower two. We are now inside of uh, NSOCLI. I'll just clear this to declutter it. Uh, first step is to uh, verify if our uh, environment uh, is uh, running properly behind the scenes. Uh, the first one is to check if the clusters are uh, up and running fine. This we can verify it uh, on upper node. Uh, for that, uh, we can say uh, show uh, cluster connection. You can see that uh, we have uh, two nodes and both are up. We will verify if uh, the packages are up and uh, running fine on uh, upper end so node. So say show packages, package of the status. You can see that they both are up. We'll do the same thing on uh, the lower nodes. They both are up. So we have verified that uh, the packages are up and running fine on all three nodes. <clears throat> um, we will attempt to connect to NetSim devices uh, for uh, each lower node uh, here. Uh, we have uh, EX uh, NetSim devices on lower one and uh, we have uh, FX uh, on lower two. So uh, we will attempt to connect uh, to them by using the command request a request devices connect. We can see that we are able to connect to all three EX devices EX0, EX1 and EX2. We'll do the same thing with uh, uh, FX devices by attempting to connect to them through lower NSO node 2. Uh, oops, sorry. Uh, we can see that uh, we are able to connect to each FX device, FX0, FX1, and FX2. Um, so we have verified that uh, now uh, our uh, environment is completely ready. Uh, <clears throat> uh, we will uh, be uh, going with service deployment now. Uh, for this example, I will try to deploy VLAN configuration on uh, devices uh, uh, using a CFS VLAN service on upper node. That will push uh, configuration to lower nodes uh, with the help of RFS VLAN service. Lower nodes will push device configuration to NetSim devices finally. So let's do that. But before that, I need to get into configuration mode on uh, uh, upper NSO terminal. So we are uh, here into configuration mode. Uh, we will use this command set to deploy the service uh, CFS VLAN service. Uh, CFS VLAN and we have a, a service name. We are going to use a router uh, EX0 which is uh, uh, onboarded on uh, lower NSO node uh, one. We will uh, select the Z router and it is going to be FX0 which is managed by lower NSO node two. Uh, we will uh, make use of uh, interfaces uh, ETH3 on both nodes, uh, both uh, devices, uh, unit three and uh, LAN. So this is how uh, we will deploy the service. And if we say, yeah, yo, um, so we, we can uh, go ahead and uh, do a commit try run. You can see this is the configuration that will be pushed uh, starting with the, the local node. And then we have uh, the lower uh, uh, nodes here, uh, each of them doing their own uh, uh, configuration uh, diff set. 
uh, just for the lower and so2 node then we have uh, the service configuration on upper node that is CFS VLAN and finally uh, we have the device configurations uh, for ex0 and uh, fx0 and uh, RFS VLAN uh, service respectively for uh, the lower nodes let's go ahead and commit you can see that uh, we have a message here uh, displaying that uh, the commit was performed by the user uh, and uh, it was done actually with the help of uh, upper NSO node uh, here uh, <clears throat> you can check the forward effect on uh, upper uh, NSO node by executing uh, this command request uh, CFS VLAN service uh, the V1 uh, and then we have get modifications you can see that this was the forward def set uh, we can also verify uh, if uh, our configurations have actually reached the devices uh, so for that I can use uh, show uh, configuration devices device and I will say ex0 uh, on NSO uh, lower node 1 and uh, I will say config and we have sys interfaces uh, interface we had uh, used eh3 eth3 so I'm going to check yep uh, here it says that uh, we have exactly the same configurations uh, that we had pushed through upper uh, node we'll do the same thing on uh, the lower uh, node uh, two um, again the same configuration command uh, uh, show configuration command uh, in operational mode uh, we have device then fx0 we have config sys and then interfaces interface eth3 here we go so this is uh, our uh, configuration and we have verified that uh, uh, it is uh, available even on our devices at last uh, if we have to stop uh, the complete services created by this environment we can make use of uh, stop target so if I supply this command, you can see that uh, all our containers are uh, now being stopped. In summary, uh, using the official uh, containerized version of NSO leverages the power of uh, container technology uh, to enhance uh, the orchestration management and operation of uh, network services, which is particularly useful for uh, complex distributed and dynamic network environments uh, like this LSA. Uh, and with this LSA, uh, uh, illustration we have exemplified how uh, containerized NSO can be beneficial in uh, realizing the different abstraction layers of both the services as well as the containers like the production and uh, development thank you